Hello, Oregon Trio Association. It is Matt Bizuk once again with your monthly OTA update. I have a lot of a large volume of updates to get to, but I'm gonna try to get through them pretty quickly in this video format. Email will have links to all the information I'm highlighting here with a lot more detail that you can find on our website and through those links. And obviously you can always reach out to me directly uh, with any questions you may have on any of these. So that being said, let's just dive right in. This is our first video update that we are doing since Robin Williams has started uh, in our full-time director of TRIO's development and support role. Uh, Robin is doing some outreach to all of the programs to try to book meetings with directors, uh, join staff meetings. So if you could all help us and accommodate uh, Robin just connecting with all the programs and getting a better feel for what your needs are, what kind of ways we can continue to support you, how we can continue to grow in the work that we do uh, with all of our members. That would be super helpful. If you're looking to do outreach with her, uh, email is just robin at oregontrio.org, uh, but you should be starting to see outreach and, and information coming from both of us moving forward. Next, I do wanna to just touch quickly on all the scholarship opportunities that are out there right now. So we have our traditional last mile scholarships. The upcoming deadline for that is February 23rd for spring funding. Uh, additionally, our statewide funds that we raise at our auctionary year for the Dirks Trio Achiever Awards. That due date is also February 23rd. So with that, we are looking for uh, at most two applicants from every grant. The way we issue the awards is by district, uh, the federal district. So there's six of those and two students per district receive awards of $500 a piece. So February 23rd is the due date for that. I also wanted to highlight quick that for our community college trio students, if you have anybody who is looking to transfer to a four-year degree, we now have a transfer scholarship of $2,500. The due date on that is April 12th. You'll see that the application questions uh, and process is incredibly similar to the last mile process. Uh, the only caveat is that this is something that we want to be more of an invite-only situation. Uh, every single SSS grant at a community college can nominate up to five students to be considered for the funding. And our goal isn't necessarily to get the best, best students possible that have the top grades or those students that traditionally do pretty well with these scholarships. This is very much trying to target those students where they may not end up transferring. Like the money element is a real challenge and $2,500 more really could be the difference between them completing the transfer or not with the ultimate goal of helping you all meet those APR objectives for transfer rates. So if you have any questions on any of those scholarship components, please reach out to us, let us know, but you can find all the information and application processes on the website. With everybody either completed or now having opened APR, uh, OTA is also collecting our Factbook data. So there's a two separate forms. The first is just our traditional Factbook form. We're gonna collect all of your objective metrics as well as some demographic information for each grant. So we can put that in the uh, full Factbook document we present to our legislators uh, at Policy Seminar in March. And then secondary, there is a link to submit a student story. So we would love to get an image of a student and a story either from their words or somebody on staff writing on behalf of them so that way we can share these stories and student successes within the fact book. So that way it's more student facing with their experiences versus just obviously the raw data. It's these two things that work together. So they are in separate forms and I am hoping by February 16th to have these turned in. So it's about two more weeks to get those completed so we have time to put together our fact book. Another action item, uh, many of the programs at this point have completed the initial form, but we are issuing out membership invoices for 2024 uh, for your OTA membership. All of these scholarships, all of the benefits, the member rates for registering for our conference are all dependent on your programs paying for the OTA membership. So there's a form, that form simply has you enter your program and GAN number, your grant award number for uh, this current academic year. And then I base the invoice off of 0.15% of that and we'll send that to you directly. So please, if you haven't done that so far, take a moment to complete that form then I can get the invoice over to you. Next, I wanted to highlight our $100 video contest that we are doing. We're trying to get more actual beyond just written stories, some actual testimony and student stories, alumni stories uh, that we can put on our social media platforms. So what we have devised is a simple form that you complete uh, 
as an advisor. We obviously can't communicate directly to students, so we reach out to all of you directly. And the incentive is that both the student can win $100 as well as the advisor who works with that student. Uh, we'll probably shift the amounts to have more of it go towards the student in future uh, iterations of this contest. But right now, it's just $100 split between both of them. That's going to be randomly selected for everyone who submits a video. So what I have linked here is a link to the actual Google form as well as the Google Drive. Obviously, when you're submitting videos, they tend to be bigger files. So by uploading it directly into this drive, that's probably the easiest way to do it. But we just ask you to fill out these simple forms that highlights uh, how you can participate just what the, the program is and for us to collect information so we can provide the award funding to folks. Next, I want to also highlight another uh, student incentive. So we have a referral incentive program going on between now and the end of March. And we are very much relying on you at the program level to determine how you want to consider what is a successful applicant. We are looking to help increase recruiting for your programs through current trio students. We often hear the best way to get more students in your program is just use the students who are already in there that love being a trio student. So we have a $1,000 award that's just gonna go directly to one of our students. Again, random selection, but for every successful application you get in your program that came from a student referral, you can complete the form linked in the email uh, to enter that student for the raffle of $1,000. Our hope, again, increase the number of applications that are coming in, particularly for those who are still struggling to get up to their full numbers coming out of COVID. And uh, we're hopeful that this can incentivize those students to help in your efforts. I did want to quickly touch on a status for our citizenship waiver. I have been sending an email every week for two months to our contact, and it sounds like we're close, but still waiting on booking a meeting with Gaby Watts to talk specifics around implementation. The waiver is signed, you can serve undocumented students, but obviously there's some nuances with how you do that. So we would like to have this meeting with our TRAIL folks in Department of Ed, so that way it can be just crystal clear for us. I think part of the reason this is being held up is there's obviously some negotiated rulemaking committees right now meeting about this just on an entire national scale of dropping the documentation requirement for students. So you know, it's a touchy subject and it goes far beyond just what's happening in Oregon, which is why I think there may be delays uh, in specifically addressing us because there is a chance that this can just be uh, an aspect that's offered to all the TRIO programs uh, in the entire nation. So more information to come. I know I keep saying that, but I am more than willing to have individual meetings with directors or we had staff meetings to kind of discuss implementation at your specific programs and, and cover some of the nuances within each of your grants. All right, up next, I just have updates on our events that we have going on. So registration is open right now for the Professional Development Conference, PDC, that's at Salishan. Dates are April 2nd through 4th for the traditional conference. You're going to want to register by February 28th. That is the cutoff for early bird registration. That is also the room block cut off, which is really the reason we put that there. You want to make sure you are registered and got that room booked before then. I did want to highlight too, we are doing a SSS grant writing post con that is free to everybody uh, here in Oregon. That programming is because of like where Easter falls the Sunday before. We didn't want to mash a bunch of pre con stuff uh, and force people to travel on a holiday weekend. However, as a post con option, I know people aren't always thrilled about that, but we often end early that Thursday, so we're gonna have an afternoon session for SSS grant writing. Uh, lunch is going to be provided. Amy Verlanik is going to be coming and spending two days with us uh, and starting to dive into the SSS grant writing. Uh, I know she was at NAP, but I think there's only a small handful of folks who were there in Boise that were able to do that session with her. It's gonna be slightly different and dive into some of those critical sections you can really start working on now as far as need and plan of operation, uh, and just some creative conversations around plan of operation and how to, how to write for an SSS grant. Uh, that programming is going to be the fourth and also the fifth. So even for current grants, uh, the afternoon of the 4th and then the morning of the 5th. We'll also provide lunch to you on the 5th and then most of the continuing grants could take off. We are going to have an afternoon session from about 1 to 5 that's meant for brand new institutions or people writing the grant for the very first time. Anybody is more than welcome to stay for the entire thing, but that last piece is designed more for the brand new 
institution. I also wanted to highlight that OTA is going to be covering the hotel night for everybody on the night of April 4th. So anybody who's going to be sticking around for the SSS grant writing workshops uh, for the 4th and 5th, you are still going to book your hotel reservations to check out on the 5th. Uh, and then what we can do behind the scenes with Sal Shan is provide a master list of names and they will charge our master account for that evening instead of to your program's card or any information like that. So uh, just if you have any questions around this, I know it's not immediately obvious with the, the hotel logistics, but I've been following up with folks who are registering for the postcon. We're hoping for a big group and to really jumpstart your writing process to get refunded in this next competition. All right, on to student events, our student leadership conference, which is taking place on April 26th. Uh, is going to be down in Ashland this year. It's at Southern Oregon University. I understand that's very far for a lot of programs and not everyone will be able to participate, but this was a great opportunity to provide some programming uh, in the southern part of the state so those folks don't have to travel quite as far. So registration is open for that now as well. At this point, we don't need specific numbers. We are just looking for a rough estimate of how many students you anticipate bringing if you are interested in participating in the one day conference. Uh, it's going to be great. We have a lot of raffle prizes we're giving away as some incentives. It's okay to bring middle school, high school, college age students. We're developing the programming to make sure that everything is going to be applicable to everybody uh, and just be a really fun day. So uh, definitely try to sign up for those earlier just so we can start in, uh, finalizing some of our food logistics and having a relatively accurate count just makes the planning process easier as we build towards that in the coming months. Finally. There is a secondary student event we're doing in Salem. The initial plan was to do this in April as well, to kind of have two student leadership conferences. Uh, but the timing of this one got delayed a little bit. So I'm going to be opening registration soon. We're calling it our Civic Leadership Conference. And we are working with the Chief Clerk's Office in the State Capitol, and they're going to be provide, providing a two-day legislative simulation workshop. So we are only able to accommodate about 125 students, but the accommodations OTA is gonna provide, this is gonna be at no cost to your programs other than getting them there. It includes lunch on the first day, dinner on the first day, overnight accommodations at Willamette University, staying in the dorms, breakfast the next morning, and lunch as well. So I'll have more detail, have a full agenda coming soon, but we're looking at doing an actual overnight legislative simulation. Again, this can be open middle school, high school, college, Age range doesn't really matter. It's actually nice to have a large range of representation because it more closely simulates uh, what a voting population works and how they come to ideas about passing bills. So we're gonna be doing a little bit of stuff on Willamette University campus, but most of the stuff work we're gonna be doing with the Chief Clerk's Office will be in the State Capitol Building using their actual committee meeting rooms and the spaces in there to simulate what it's like to, to learn about the legislative process and how you can impact that as a citizen and what kind of work is involved to get a bill passed in our Oregon legislature. So a really amazing, cool opportunity. The dates for that are Friday, June 7th through June 8th. I understand that those dates may fall on top of some of our high school graduations. So make sure you plan accordingly. Hopefully we can still get enough folks who are interested that are wanting to attend. Uh, so once I open registration, it's going to be very similar to the other student events. You're basically just going to ask to reserve a set number of spots for your students. Next, I want to just touch on the new federal low income levels for 2024. I've thrown it up on the screen here uh, and I'll have a link to the website as well in the email, but just making sure everybody has this updated information so they can adapt their uh, application processes accordingly. And finally, uh, some of the work that I'm going to be doing this year, especially now that Robin is on board, is be, try to be more active in engaging with our legislators at all levels. So what I want to do right now is hone in specifically on the federal Congress recess dates, right? So our senators, our representatives, when are they here in Oregon and what are opportunities to get them to come to your program? I have the ability to kind of help uh, do the invitations, do communications, help coordinate trying to get folks to the cool events that you are doing with your students. We are always told to try to get them to come and engage with our students, but it's complicated and probably not stuff you all want to always take onto your plate. So what I'm going to do here on the screen, these are all the federal recess dates. I'm not going to read them all off. There's a bunch. These are the times when folks are here in Oregon. 
What I want from you all is if you have any kind of cool event, you're doing some kind of workshop, a Saturday thing, a weekend thing, a field trip, anything at all that is going on within these time frames. If you can let me know, then I will do the work to try to work with not only your institution's kind of public policy staff and communications to make sure that we are kind of uh, sending the ask and not just going rogue and having like Senator Merkley pop in your program and your college has no idea, like they would probably be really pissed about that. So helping to coordinate some of the communications from the institution and maybe coordinate invitations to our elected officials uh, if they're gonna come to our institutions or come to high schools, um, just to try to get them in front of our students. We're always told to do this. I wanna start doing more of this stuff uh, and helping coordinate. So, the, but I don't know, I don't wanna just cold call and let you know that like, hey, I have a Bonamici coming to your program. Can you pull up something cool? Like I want it to be a coordinated dance kind of between us. So definitely just let me know. Uh, I, what I have here is the dates kind of from March into July. I didn't want to push anything too soon. So anything at all that's going on, provide that stuff to me. I'm going to create a big list and we'll try to help coordinate ways to actually get those people that sign off on our trio money every year to actually see our students here in the state. With that, I don't have any more updates and I appreciate all of you hopefully for Locking in on this stuff, paying attention, uh, identifying the areas that actually require a little bit of action and work on your end. I so hope that people are able to attend all of our conferences, for both professionals and the students. Uh, we work really hard to provide great services to you all and are looking to really expand our professional development arm now that Robin is on board. So we love supporting you all doing this work, uh, but we're always open ears and ways in which we can improve and do a better job. So. With that, I hope you have a wonderful February, and I will see you all soon. Take care.